Hey guys, my name is Louise and I am a tradeswoman empowerment coach and today I am going to be talking about the gender pay gap. Um, for us as peoples, um, I think it's just important to talk about it. I get the information, get the facts out there. Um, all my facts come from Google, um, which I have on this sticky note. <laughs> so my facts come from the Workplace Gender Equality Agency which say at November 2020, the gender wage gap in Australia was 13.4%. All right, so with that, what is the gender pay gap? Where does it even come from? So the way they calculate the gender pay gap is by calculating the median weekly average of men versus women and then doing a percentage of the difference. Um, a lot of the difference does come from traditionally male work being a higher pay, um, generally because it's more dangerous. Um, men are encouraged into, well society encourages men into places of work that are more dangerous and more highly paid. So oil rigs, you know, construction, anything that is like going to destroy your body. Uh, where typically female work is lower paid. Um, so which is something that I think just talking about and encouraging people into the jobs they want to do really, really helps. Um, in the gender pay gap, it doesn't touch on different hours, um, but that does have, so when women are at home, when if women are the primary caregivers, then that means generally they're working part-time or not at all, which means there's no money going into their super account. So then there's the super gap, because um, men typically work most of their career they're actually working whereas women will take breaks to care um have the children <laughs> which means there's no money going into their super so that's a different thing again all right and then there is a thing that i believe that we should talk about to help fix um so generally in society people are told not to talk about their money um, how much are you earning? You don't want to make other people feel bad, blah, blah, blah. Um, whatever things you've heard, um, might typically come from being told that it's private information. But when we're talking about gender pay difference and you know, equal pay, how are we supposed to know what it is if we don't know what other people who are doing the same job as us are getting paid? Like, how are we even supposed to know? Um, so for me, one of the big things and one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is to just tell you guys the story of my pay over the last... So I've been out of school for almost 10 years now. Um, I've been working full-time the whole time. Um, and I think just having the conversation and being able to compare notes, pretty much, with people in your industry, um, it really will help us us know on a ground level what is actually happening, what is happening with our peers. Um, and that way then we can. We can ask for a pay rise, we can be asked to match other people that are doing the same work as us. Um, I think it's really important to talk about these things. Alright, so my pay story. So I started my apprenticeship in 2012 as a heavy vehicle or heavy commercial vehicle mechanic. Um, I was one of five apprentices to start. And there were a few different um, things that meant we had different pays. Um, so out of the five of us, we all started. Um, the big thing that calculated the difference of pay between us is what year we finished school. So me and two others had finished school at the end of year 10, um, and we were all on the same pay. Um, and then two of the guys, I'm 90% sure two of the guys had finished year 12, so they were on a little bit higher than us. And then year, um, in November of the first year, so we started in January, in November of the first year, we got a performance-based pay rise. My, oh yeah, so the pay that I was getting was $7.32. And that was the, um, the standard pay at that time. Um, I think it's gone up to like 13 for a first year apprentice at the moment. Um, so then we had that, and then we had a performance-based pay rise in November, and my pay went up to $9 something an hour. Um, and then when we, when we turned second years, we got a pay rise again, 
because the second year pay rise. Third year, fourth year, you know, going up. And then still we had like a bit of a performance incentive. So it wasn't just up by year. We had a performance review that then gave us a pay rise as well. Um, and I can't remember the exact numbers except for that first number. Um, but I we did discuss between each other because we were discussing our um, performance reviews and stuff like that. And I felt like I was getting paid fairly compared to the others at the whole time. Um, when I turned, so another difference happened when I turned tradie, but when two of us out of the five finished the apprenticeship um, at that workplace, um, and the other apprentice got fast tracked. So what fast tracked is is when they finish the apprenticeship early. He finished about six months early, but part of that deal is that they, if you at that workplace, if you fast track your apprenticeship, then there's a certain amount of time that you can't get a pay rise. Um, I finished my apprenticeship like on time on the date that was calculated four years before um, and then two months after that I had a performance review with a performance based pay rise so at that workplace the standard rate of pay for a qualified tradesperson um, was $29 um, so I went straight on to $29 um, and then a few months later I got a performance based pay rise and I got $2 more an hour so I was on $31 an hour um, that was in 2016. Um, so that's when I turned tradie, that's when I got that. Um, I ended up leaving that workplace, um, for my mental health. So if I hadn't left that workplace, there would be a very high chance that I wouldn't be here, um, unfortunately. So when I left that workplace, I wasn't looking at money or anything. I was looking at quality of life and quality of work. So I ended up dropping back a fair bit. So I ended up dropping back to $25 an hour um, to work for a smaller business that could nurture me and I felt safe, comfortable and included. Um, so I went down to $25 an hour and I worked at job for two years. Um, I did talk to my peers um, in that job, or one of them. Um, and when he turned tradie, he was also given $21, $25 an hour. So we were equal there. Um, from there, I went on to an apprentice mentoring role, um, where I was on 50000 a year. Um, it was, in my standing, 50000 was a bit low. Um, I did get a car at the same time, and talking to my peers who were doing the same job as me, we were all on the same pay. Um, when I really started to research pays is when I was going into a trainer and assessor role. So that company that was paying me $50,000 a year, I was going into a trainer and assessor role and I thought my pay would go up because the standard pay for a technical trainer and assessor was like 70, um, 75 or something like that. Um, and they kept telling me, oh no, you're a new trainer, you know, we're going to keep you on 50 and then I think I managed to get a push up to 60. Um, but I already done enough research that I found that it wasn't what I wanted and I could get more. So I ended up contacting a few of my contacts and one of them got back to me, um, which was actually at my last training and assessment job, so the job that I left at the beginning of the year, um, where their starting rate for a trainer and assessor with their qualifications, so not including experience or anything, someone who can straight up be a trainer and assessor, um, was 96, um, thousand a year. So I was on 96,000 a year, um, took that job and lived happily ever after for two years on that. Um, I did find there was some discrepancy in pay um, between me and some of my co-workers um, in favour of me actually. So there was a co-worker that started about a year after I did and he was missing one of his qualifications um, and he was getting paid 10 grand less than me a year. Um, so, um, he had, like, there was a, a clause in there that he said he needed to get his qualification, so that's why he was on a different pay. Um, and now I am a freelance trainer and assessor and, um, a life coach. My life coaching business at the moment doesn't have any profitability to it, um, but my training and assessment work, um, is charged out. Um, my contract, so I've got a 20 hour week contract and that's charged out at $80 an hour. Um, and then for any one off casual work, I charge $200 an hour um, for my time. 
Um, but that's just me now, and as demand grows, then my um, my rates will go up accordingly. I mean, that's a decision that I need to make for myself because I'm now my own boss. Um, so, gender pay gap, there are issues that are slightly out of our control, um, mostly through society, but we're all part of society, so the biggest thing that we can do is talk about them. Um, I really think this talking piece about a lot of things is really, really important. I know um, there was um, some research or even just there's heaps of things about how it's not the marginalised group responsibility to educate middle-aged white men pretty much. Um, but as a community, as a whole, I think it's really important if we find something that we don't think is right or that we're curious about to Google it to ask a question. Um, I think it's really important to talk about these things and one thing that we can simply talk about is how much do we get paid? It'll be a long time before everyone is comfortable on it but I do know that LinkedIn has a, like a pay comparison thing as well which I think is pretty cool. Um, but guys, talk about things. Alright, so I actually didn't point out my shirt but it's the she wear um, you get what you cross out wish work for. Um, I thought it was just a bit ironic to wear it during this video um, about the gender pay gap. Uh, but anyway, I know that I didn't cover everything about the gender pay gap, but I covered what I know, what resonates with me, and I've shared a bit of my story um, to you guys of my pay journey. Um, so if you're a tradeswoman and you really want to start kicking ass, um, you probably already are, but if you want to kick even more ass, um, please DM me and we can book in a time to chat to see if I can help you and you want to be helped by me. Um, I would love to meet you and talk to you as well. Alright guys, um, please share this video if you find um, value in it and you think other people will do too. Alright guys, keep on smashing it. I will see you next time.